High Gear was originally developed uh, for true force on force training. Has the lineage you want to kind of talk about, Tony Blauer's near I don't sword. care how you kick, I care whether you do yeah. kick. So this is entirely new, but it's got a lot of the same foundation. Yeah, I've seen your name on a lot of flyers, a lot of seminars. This is a bridge to your complex. So we're dumping that feedback into the new suit. All right, guys, so obviously we got high gear behind us. We got Tony Blauer. We're gonna talk about the history, the lineage, why it's important, why it's the best impact reduction suit on the market, and several other things. Tony, as always, it's good to see you. The first thing that I wanted to get into was how did you get to the point where you built the original suit? I don't know if you know this uh, officially, but m my first client was the Navy. I had this prototype and I really wanted them to, to see it. And so I do a demo and I hang out with them. And when I show them the prototype and started explaining to them that gear that's too bulky distorts proximity sense, which means you inadvertently are, are aiming for targets that Calculate don't exist that in real life. Yep. You know, the danger with certain types of gear is you build tactics around the gear. And that's what I saw with the bulky gear is that people started to get good with the bulkier gear, but they were designing their skills and drills around the, the use of the gear and the limitations the gear presented. High gear was and still is like state of the art for like that base suit. I look at the adaptive suit, it's the frame, the concept, the principles, the essence of what high gear was about, but now it's supercharged. We found a material, the pull on XRD. We put that through the whole face and the whole chest area, which are the two major impact areas. We wanted to make build the helmet so that it could take sim rounds. The visor comes up. Guys can unbuckle it, lift it up. They can listen, hear, talk, back in it. Now you're protected again. We took away the openings on the top, so that way if you are doing any type of blade training, you're not gonna slip into the top and get nicked on the head. The adaptable panel, which is the biggest thing of why we called it adaptive. So that adaptable panel will allow you to go from scenario to scenario. As the scenario changes, so does the suit. Here's the thing is, I like practicing in real environments. This is a portable mat. Correct. On a human body. Absolutely. We need people to understand that, that in a real fight, the only thing that influences how and when you move is the movement of the bad guy. So I say it all the time. How can I train as close to reality as I possibly can? You need to add something to your training that's gonna allow you to do that and still have the mobility, flexibility, input and feedback as possible, right? If my role player can behave exactly like a real bad guy from his language to his gestures to his movements, then I can experience the emotional, psychological, and physical adaptations needed to practice self-defense. Only high gear does that. So we've been able to talk about a lot, especially about the right equipment, right? The way you equip yourself, no matter what your background is, no matter where you come from, adding the right equipment to own the edge and how you train to get as close to reality as you possibly get is key. Oh, as always, brother, it's great to see you. And we're gonna continue to do things out in the industry. We're gonna continue to own that edge and evolve new equipment and new gear, new training. Anything else, brother? No, this is this is a lot of fun. If you if you understand why, that'll change everything. And and that was that was the goal with with this talk. And the only way to do that is with the with the right equipment. Absolutely. The evolution of the original, the adaptive, between London Bridge Trading Company, LBX, Tony Blauer, Dynamis. It's good stuff. Go check us out and keep training hard.